Hello everyone, and this is the third of my movie tutorials. This will be going over like how to set up arcade mode and how to like uh, set, up, set up the order which you fight the CPU in. Um, so, like, and unlike the other two tutorials I made, I'm also gonna go over like uh, I'm basically going over two methods that you can set up uh, that you can do this. So the first one will be just the uh, the old-fashioned way of just going to the data and then um, select it. But uh, there's also another way which I'm gonna go over later when I'm done with this which uh, is gonna show how to use this uh, little program here, this little application um, I guess you can call it that, the, which is called vselect.exe and basically like what it does is that it makes changing the changing your game like a lot more simple and more organized so just uh, tune in for that so yeah anyway so you're gonna oh my god I'm saying so quite a bit okay now uh, so you're gonna open up your select uh, .tf again just you know pretty usual at this point and you're gonna go all the way down until you see uh, here the options uh, section and it kind of explains it all pretty well here, but uh, just so people can get the hang of it, I'm gonna like explain it a little bit here. Um, so you basically like the key part is this here. This is for just regular arcade mode, and then there's also here, uh, which is for um, team battles, as it says right here. So uh, what this does is it has these numbers here, and then it, again it explains it right here. But uh, I'm just gonna demonstrate it a bit. Um, and like uh, basically what you do is you add, it adds up to the total number of fights you have so let's say like you want arcade mode to last like um, eight fights there's eight matches and then after and then that's it you, you finish arcade mode um, uh, basically this is pretty interesting what you can do here because you can use it to set up like a specific like there's a specific point in, it in the arcade mode where you can fight a specific character if you set it up that way and there's also like if you want you can make it so that you have bosses at the end which is uh, pretty cool anyway um, so here like uh, this is the one that I've set up for I believe this is the example one that I had yeah for the other tutorials and basically what this six here means is that you, if you have like a six here for example it basically means you're gonna have um, uh, six matches, six randomly selected matches, but here the but since it's the first number in this, um, I guess you can call it the row. Uh, it's order one, and then right here means uh, if I put like for example one or two, it doesn't really uh, matter. It's gonna pick one uh, randomly selected fighter in the second order or order two, and uh, so for example, uh, like if you like here, like the way I have this set up is like uh, I'm going to have uh, six matches in order one, which are all randomly selected, and uh, then after it's done with the six matches, it's going to move on to two, to the other two matches, which are in order two, and what, and then it will randomly pick any like uh, characters that have the order two tag on them. And then it's the same thing with order three, and then you're pretty much done. And it's the exact same thing with team battles. So, and the way you can set it up here is you can put a comma, and then uh, you can set up the stages, like I have here, uh, just some, like, for example. And here you put like the uh, stages. So let's just put that really quick. Uh, and then after that, you don't have to do this the, to include the stage part, but it, it still helps. And then you're going to put order equals two. And for the other ones, like if you want, uh, like since the majority of them is going to be on, uh, are usually going to be on, on uh, order one, uh, it just automatically takes anybody that doesn't have a tag on. So like for these two that don't really have a tag on them, you don't specifically have to write have to write out like order one for each and every one of them because that would get kind of uh, annoying pretty quickly. But you don't have to do that thankfully. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. 
so that was that was the basic like like the first method to do this and then there is the visa like which I mentioned earlier and what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna open this up and what you're gonna normally have to do is you're gonna have to open up the motive uh, and then find your uh, system.df which I think is this one right here I believe or if not try this one here on the data folder but uh, most of the time it's gonna be the Mugen one that I mentioned uh, in the last video but um, yeah and then once you're here it pretty much like shows you all the columns and you can just edit them in a more in a way that's a lot more simple and easier to do it's like for example uh, uh, you can just right click on uh, any empty column and you can just press insert and then you can just uh, enter any character you want but I only have like these three that you've already seen so I'm just gonna add like you know your spider-man again and then you can move them over so now there's two spider-man right uh, near each other so that's, that's good I guess but uh, yeah uh, and then you can also add like a random select which uh, here you go um, so what's interesting though is that you can right click on the characters and then you can go to properties and, uh, and then here you can just set up the stage here uh, pretty easily and yeah and like when you click this icon here it will just pop up your uh, stages uh, folder uh, and the thing is that it doesn't really have to be on your stages folder to do this you can just go to anywhere near anywhere on your um, computer but it will just make like if you move that file later on it will just make things uh, more complicated so but I so I recommend just keeping it on a stage folder anyway so like for example I can set it up so that uh, this is the stage and then there's the background music which um, doesn't hasn't really I don't, I don't I don't know if I've gotten this to work right I would still recommend you just uh, uh, just put the because I've always used the background music on the stage, so I haven't really tried this. So if you want background music, you can just uh, put it in on this stage, which I've also shown in another video. And if you're gonna do this, I recommend you uh, uh, uncheck include stage because what this is gonna do is just gonna like make another copy of the stage with the characters. So if I do this, since I already have Final Destination on uh, the on my game, it's gonna add another copy, which is uh, just making things more complicated for no reason. And this is a big one, and this is like the the part I want to show you is that you can also change the order through here. So let's let's say I change it to order three, then OK, and then uh, I open up the select.df again, and uh, wait, what? Oh right! I, oh, I forgot to press save. Oops, my bad. Okay, and then select that TF, and here it is. Uh, and then it also added all the other commands, include stage zero. That's because I unchecked that thing, that little box there earlier. And then there is uh, the stage, the order three. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, and it basically just. Like, uh, if you can see here that it all, like, translates well to here. So you can just... So, in the future, if you're making, like, a, like a custom game or a custom screen pack, I, like, I highly recommend using this since it will make things uh, a lot easier and a lot faster. So, um, that's honestly all. I mean, there, there isn't much else I, I can say. I mean, it's, it was, was kind of like... Uh, hard talking through this because it was just pretty simple that's about it and um, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, have fun